Okay, so theorem let uh, TT be uh, uh, a C0 semigroup. Okay, so there exists um, constants constants W real number and m also greater than one greater or equal such that the norm of tt is less than equal than m e omega t this is for um zero t infinity okay so let's see the proof so you have to choose a constant m greater and equal to one such that um the norm of tt is less than equal to n. This is for all um, t between 0 and 1. Okay, okay. so there is no problem with this because we are asking for an upper bound and we are just saying that uh, for this interval m to, has to be bigger than 1. That's uh, the only thing we are not losing generality, we are just uh, asking something that can happen then let omega equal to log logarithm of m ok then for each uh, t positive and if um, n is the least okay the least integer greater than t okay so the smallest integer greater than t then okay so we have norm of tt this will be equal to um, t of the sum of uh, k equal to 1 n of t over n okay so we know that n is bigger than t and that if we sum n times t over n we will get back to this t here this by uh, semigroup property will be the same as the product k equal to 1 to n of uh, t of um, t over n okay, norm. So this is the same as multiplying this n times, okay? So this will be equal to t of t over n to the n norm. So the n, the n can go outside, okay? Okay, and now we know that t n is greater than t, so t over n is between 0 and 1. So this can be bounded by um, this can be bounded by m. So this is less than equal than m to the n. Okay, this is an m, this is an n. Okay, at the same time n is the least integer bigger than t, so this has to be um, 
to less than or equal than m to the t plus 1. This is also true because m is uh, greater than 1. Okay. So m is greater than t, but is more or is uh, n is between t and t plus 1, and m is um, is uh, greater than 1. Okay. So uh, we said that um, omega is equal to log m, so e omega is equal to m. And we can say that this is m e omega t is what we wanted to see. Okay? Okay, so a corollary. Um so if T T is a C zero semigroup then for each f next t t t f okay this mapping is a continuous function this is from a plus to x okay okay so just remember that uh, if this is a C0 semigroup, then we know that uh, the limit when t goes to 0 of uh, 0 plus, okay, that doesn't matter, ttf is f for each. F x, and now we're going to prove that uh, the limit uh, when h goes to zero plus and minus, let's say, of t t plus h, okay, or we can also put minus h, changing here plus or minus, is going to be t of t, okay. So now it was. The property for C0 semigroup or strongly continuous. And now we're going to see that this map is continuous, okay? So let's make some room for the proof. Okay, so first let uh, T H greater than 0, okay? And F in X. Then we have um, well, the norm of t, let's take the case t plus h, okay, of f minus t t, f norm, okay, um, this is uh, equal because of semi group property, t t, t h, f minus t t f okay this is less than equal 10 okay so we take this t t and this in both take it out and we will have the normal for t t multiply by t h uh, minus f, okay, this will be less than equal. Now we will use the theorem that we know that this is bounded if we are in a C0 semigroup by m e omega t. Uh, t is fixed, you know, that is uh, equal to 0, but here we have t h f minus f, and when this goes to 0, this is going to be 0. In the other side, what happens for uh, 
t greater equal than h greater than equal than zero. So now we're going through the other side of the h. Okay, that means that we're going to start with uh, t of t minus h instead of plus h. F minus t t f f. Okay, norm. This will be equal to the norm of uh, again t of t minus h f. Okay, minus and now we um we have t of t and now we will add a minus h and a plus h. Okay, the famous trick. No. And uh, now I'm going to take off this H away. Okay. So we will have the norm of T of T minus H. We have minus T of T minus H. T H F. No. Okay, and now we can we have a t minus h here, t minus h here, we can take it out and bound this, okay? So we have on one side t of t minus h and on the other what is left? F minus um t h f. So once again we are going to apply this theorem because we are in a C0 group. We will apply it here. And we will have M E omega T. We are in the same situation as before, which this will be zero when H goes to zero. Here really we have a T H uh, a T minus H. So here would be T minus H, but when the limit goes to zero, this is all the same. Okay, this is the proof that uh, the color I. Okay, so a definition for a C0 semigroup. Okay, let's say tau equals to TT. With t greater than equal to zero, we call omega zero omega zero equal by definition. Let's say omega zero of a tau, a family, or the uh, infimum of the w's in R such that there exists and w greater or equal than one such that norm tt is less than equal to mw ewt this is for all t greater than zero okay okay so this will be growth bound okay or or, or growth type Growth bound because because it's the infimum of all the w's that you can take such that you have a m greater than one like we have in the theorem but it's the smallest that you can put here such that this is the infimum okay so then we can call that the semi group is bounded. If we can can take w equal to zero, okay, and contractive if uh, contractive if w is equal to zero and m equal to one, it has to be possible, okay. Finally, we will say that this is symmetric if t x is equal to x, okay.